Hi, this is Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today we're going to talk about, we're going to interview, have a chat with Andrew Jones, the chief designer for ELAC and the man that designed this amazing subwoofer that we have an amazing buy on. But before we go there, I want to say something. Yes, you guessed it. We had a contest for a free t-shirt. The rock star I want to be most is Steven Tyler. It is true. I mean, that dude is so cool. I mean, he just, I mean, look, I, I, I also, I mean, you could talk about the Stones, but for some reason, I would love to be Steven Tyler if I was going to be anybody. I don't know about you guys, and I think everybody dreams of that. You know, I had a weird week because I had a guy named Simon that just called me. And Simon said, Kevin, I love your videos. He said, you know why? He says, you're not afraid to show your feminine side and being in touch with your feelings. And I thought that was kind of funny. I go, well, thanks. I appreciate that. And you know, I, I, I don't mind telling people the way it is, whether it's about electronics or about myself. I don't care. The truth is the truth, right? And right after I hung up with him, Ash, the store manager, goes, I just blacklisted a customer. I go, what's that about? He goes, oh, you don't want to know. I go, what do you mean I don't want to know? Then I really had to know, right? Some guy sends in a comment about me in a homophobic slur. Now, why would that bother me? Well, it's not because I'm not gay, because I'm not gay. I'm married. And by the way, because I'm in touch with my feminine side, I have never been divorced. It's not because of that, it's because some of the greatest people in my life are gay. And I just don't dig that. I'm talking about people in the industry and out. Some of the greatest people I know are gay and I just don't dig that. At Upscale Audio, love and tolerance is our code. So this dude sends in this comment and it's so weird because he's bought a bunch of stuff here. So I sent him back an email and I just said, hey man, I don't dig that behavior. I reject it. And he came back and called and he apologized. And that's all I need, right? It's cool. All is forgiven because love and tolerance is our code means that we just forgive that stuff. I have done so many dumb things in my life. If I was judged by every dumb thing I've ever done, I couldn't go shopping anywhere or I'd never be free, right? And then another guy <laughs> sends a message in to one of my salespeople and says, I went and I demoed Klipsch Forte 3s. They let me take them home. I demoed them in the store. Now I want to buy them from you. And we're like, uh, Kat says, what do you want me to do? I said, send them back to the dealer. Why do you do things that make you feel bad later, right? I don't understand what's going on in this world. Some kind of a soul sickness where people want to take and they don't care about how they treat others. No. Go to your local dealer if you have one. Those guys are barely eking out a living right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you don't have one, if you want to do business with us, we're more than happy to help you. But I am all about the small mom and pop shops because those guys in the best of times are eking out a living. And right now, maybe not so much. So make sure you take care of them, okay? I'm going to bring on Andrew. And I got to say something. Andrew is one of my heroes because he is the real deal and he gets it. So uh, he's famous for designing products like TAD. He's famous for designing great big super expensive speakers but what he gets a big thrill out of is products that kick ass for a more reasonable price point and I love that too. So let's bring him on. All right Andrew. Andrew can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh that's good. <laughs> well I'm glad you didn't hear the previous five minutes because all I was doing was bitching and complaining. About so me? That's <laughs> no, not about you, about other stuff. So my, my wife's nickname for me is Grumpy Gray. That's the nickname for me. So uh, 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 Andrew Jones, thank you so much for joining us. Andrew is absolutely one of my heroes for a couple of reasons. You know, Andrew's a guy who is so talented that he has designed some of the most iconic loudspeakers uh, in the world and very, very expensive loudspeakers. But I think that uh, we are somewhat kindred in that we get a big thrill um, out of also getting people super high-end sound for a more reasonable price. Am I pegging you the right way saying that, Andrew? Yes. You're making me blush, but I got autocorrect in the camera system, so you'll never notice. <laughs> but yes, apart from doing very high-end systems, I really, really, really enjoy doing um, speakers that are affordable for pretty much everybody. 
Um, in my career, I've gone over a thousand to one ratio in price point. It's uh, quite intriguing. And I didn't know unless until we had were chit chatting uh, not long ago that you had something to do with the the old Kef 104s, which I used to sell those back in the day when I was working at RSL. And I did wasn't aware that you were involved in that project. Uh, on the periphery. So when the Kef 104 II was being developed, was uh, I joined Kef halfway through that development project, but I was on research. So my contribution was a very straightforward one. The, we were looking at new kinds of inductor cores and my job was to research those cores and test the limit as to how much flux they could handle before they overloaded. So, you know, just a little bit to get my toes in the water uh, working for KEF, but it, that was a hugely successful speaker for KEF. And that was a long, long time. What was that, the late 80s, I guess? Uh, Something like that? Three, 1983. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm getting so old. <laughs> Jesus. And then, uh, of course, the work that you did with uh, TAD, right? With TAD. I mean, I came across the pond at the invite of uh, Floyd Toole to come and work at Infinity. And so I did about three years or so at Infinity. But um, then I got the opportunity to go and work for Pioneer, which turned into the opportunity to start TAD Home Audio with a flagship speaker. So that was the TAD Model 1 followed by the reference one. And that was a fantastic time. The access to technology uh, that I had there and working with the Japanese engineers were some of the best acoustic engineers on the planet. It was wonderful. <clears throat> You know, when you're talking about companies like that, I mean, they have the abilities to just throw a hundred engineers at something. I mean, it's really, right? Well, I mean, they're very serious about getting things done, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, two examples. One, we were looking at the structure of some of the, the material and they, oh, we'll just go and take that to the electron microscope. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. And then um, when BMW uh, launched their um, diamond tweeter, I was chatting to the guys in Tokyo and saying, you know, what, what are the characteristics of um, diamonds so I can contrast them to beryllium? And the, the chemist there, he reached into his desk drawer and brought out this jewel box and inside was a diamond tweeter diaphragm. I go, well, where did you get that? He said, oh, we made it back in 1992 and it was in a product in the marketplace in 1993. And that afternoon they brought me the original copy of the brochure or and gave it to me as a present to say yeah this is what we were doing <laughs> so God, <clears throat> been there fun. done that <laughs> yeah and so you know that kind of brings us around to what we're talking about today and that is this uh those that listen to my youtube channel they know that uh, first off when i tell you to buy a subwoofer and i'm not telling you to do that to necessarily get better bass response i'm telling you to do it to get a better mid band to get a greater sense of scale to get greater voices when you want to hear a a crooner like jim morrison or uh, you know, or Johnny Cash, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why you buy a subwoofer. But I tell people all the time, and I still hold to this to a great degree, that you should buy subwoofers from sub some from subwoofer specialists like REL or JL Audio because, I mean, REL, I mean, that's all they do. And for so many other speaker companies, subwoofers are, they go, okay, let's do this and this and put it in a box and then that's it. And I just don't think that they have the ability to get products done the way I want them done or that a specialist can get it done. When I saw this product uh -huh. and I saw how much it cost and I listened to it and the performance, I said, oh my God. And I said, I knew that you had a lot to do with it because it is badass. So, you know, those rules that I, the, those suggestions I make to people, they're certainly not absolutes because I believe in parts and engineering. And when Andrew Jones gets behind something like this, uh, you were able to throw real engineering assets at it, right? Yeah, it's also a case of when we look at going into a product category, and of course, as a speaker manufacturer, people will always go, well, do you have a matching subwoofer? And what do you mean by a matching subwoofer? Does it mean that for every, every speaker series, do we have to have a specific series of subwoofer? Or are subwoofers of a price and performance capability that you just freely mix and match 
with whatever speaker you have that is in that price performance category. And on top of that, it's, well, rather than just, yeah, we've got our own subwoofer branded the same, so presumably it should work with our branded speaker. Is there technology we can bring to the market that is solving a need that people have but hasn't been met yet? So it's one thing to just be concentrating on price performance ratio, but the other aspect is what is missing from how you use a particular component and can we contribute to that to make it easier for you? Mm -hmm. And so some of that is incorporated in the sub 3070. Yeah, sub 3070, I'm telling you at the price that this is offered at, it is an unbelievable value. Click on the description, you'll see what I'm talking about as far as the price goes. And I look at it and I go, Jesus, it weighs 77 pounds. And when I looked at the way they pack it, it was just such obvious quality. I'm talking about the cabinet, the finish of the cabinet, the base. Now it's two 12 inch active drivers. Now tell me about that driver, please. So when you're designing a subwoofer, you can pull acoustic tricks if you need to with use of vents or passive radiators. Or you can just say, you know, if I've got enough power, which is a lot easier to do these days than it used to be, and I've got well enough designed drivers with voice coils that can handle the power, I can sort of basically force those drivers to do what I want. If there's enough area, enough excursion, enough power handling, and enough power. So that's the choice we made in this one. And one of the issues when you're trying to do a subwoofer is you don't want it walking across the floor. You know, very often we, well, especially with this one, we put it on spikes. But if you're on hard floors, you then have to put cups underneath because if the forces are unbalanced in the subwoofer, it will walk with the right type of signals. And I remember when Carver brought out his original tiny little powered subwoofer. We'd be testing it on the bench, and before you knew it, it had walked off to the edge of the bench and fallen off. So you want to balance the forces if you can. And by having two side-firing woofers in this case, they are force balanced. And mm. that means you've got no net forces trying to move the cabinet relative to the floor. So that's the first point with, with that. Um, and then just like enough power to drive those 12 inches to the full excursion and then with the right amount of EQ tailored to the characteristics of those drivers you can make it do what I in this case what I want it to do mm -hmm. to give it a frequency response and a output capability that meets the criteria I set for that speaker. Now, I love that they are opposing active drivers. It is not a 12 and a passive, but active drivers, and that you tapered the front. And I'm gonna tell you why I like that, and people may not think about it. If you, I'm gonna point this to the camera right now a uh -huh. little bit. It has less mass. It only looks like it's a 12 inch wide box from the front because of this taper. And that really works, especially if you're dealing with a significant other that doesn't dig the idea of having a pair of subs in the house, right? I love that. It just does not look like it's that big. And in fact, for a woofer that performs the way that it performs, it, it really isn't that big. But that's because of the quality of the drivers and so much power. It has a 1200 watt bash amplifier. And those that don't know what a bash amp is, it means that it doesn't sound like a digital amp. It is a class AB amp. So it's got that full power and that weight. But the, um, but the, the uh, power supply for it can change its operation so it's very efficient. Correct, Andrew? Yeah, the idea of the, the inefficiency of a class AB amplifier is because there's the full voltage applied from the power supply all the time regardless of signal level that you require. So when you don't require all that voltage, you're kind of wasting it in the output devices as heat. If you can modulate the power supply to only ever be enough for the power you need to produce at that instant, then the whole system gets more efficient. So that's the basic technology. There's several ways of doing it, and ours is called BASH. Um, it's a particular variant of that. But it does mean the amplifier is much more efficient, 
and then it can be directly tailored to the power levels you require for those woofers. Exactly, and it has that really beautiful weight. Now I'm gonna say something to, to people. If you're the kind of customer that <clears throat> drives a Honda Civic that has a Folgers coffee can for an exhaust pipe and you wanna be able to make the license plate of the car rattle, this is not the woofer for you. <laughs> This is not a boom, boom woofer. This woofer is extremely tight and extremely, it's agile is the best way to describe it. And that's why I love it so much. So it is not a boom box for those that are looking for that. It's a super, super musical subwoofer. And because of its size, I mean, you can get a pair of them in the house and they don't show up that much. Now let's talk about the inputs. On the back, you've got speaker level in, in case you don't have a subwoofer out. Yeah. You got a pair of XLR ends. If you need to run balanced in, then you have preamp in. And what else do you have back here? Oh, you have a master level control so you can get to the general volume setting that you need to. And then everything else is done on the app, correct? Correct. It works over Bluetooth low energy. So everything is controlled via an app on the phone. You don't even have to go into the Bluetooth on the phone in order to pair it. It's done just directly in the app. So you just turn on your phone, select the app, it immediately pairs with the subwoofer, and then all the controls that you might need are there in real time. You know, controls such as not just level, but the uh, frequency cutoff of the subwoofer, uh, adjustable from 40 hertz up to 150, um, the phase, and then EQ, you can adjust all of these as uh, you're listening to the music sat at your listening location. It's a very useful feature. And this can be hooked up with Wi-Fi if you buy the optional ELAC, uh, the little box. What do they call it? I forget the... Yes, it's also got a um, wireless connectivity, um, something called... Um, Air X2 in our case. So it's a proprietary communication system, but it can connect it wirelessly. And we have a little transmitter box that has three output channels, uh, left, right, and subwoofer. Or it can be uh, configured to be three individual subwoofers. So you can connect them all together and drive them wirelessly. So you don't even have to hook wires up to it. Now you right. brought up the phase adjustment from the remote. That is critical. I mean, for those of you that, that don't know, phase means that the bass driver is working in unison with the bass driver of your main speakers, but your main speakers are gonna be in a different spot. So to get phase just right, takes just a little bit of playing and a little bit of listening. And what you've done on this application, on this app, is you have continuously variable from zero to 360 degrees, so you can always get phase absolutely perfect, right? Yeah, and as I say, you do that while listening from your listening location. You're not getting up and down and walking over to the back of the subwoofer to make a small change and then come back and listen. Uh, you can do it in the comfort of your own seat. You don't even need kids you, to have to do it for you. <laughs> and then you have low pass, that means where is the subwoofer operating from 100 hertz down or 60 hertz down or whatever. Yeah. And then you have a parametric EQ to fine tune the frequency response of the subwoofer to the room, correct? Yes, so if you have an auxiliary measurement system, for example, or just your ears, you can uh, dial in up to eight parametric EQ filters to kind of touch it up and get a, you know, the best response at your listening location. And then if you don't know what the best response is and you want the uh, computer to figure it out for you, what else did you guys do? Because I love this feature. <laughs> it is so bitching. So you know, we know with higher end receivers these days, you have auto EQ. So this is where um, computerized programming within the receiver uh, along with a calibrated microphone that you drag out to your listening location on the cable and connect up and then try and measure the room uh, to measure what the subwoofer is doing at your listening location and then EQ it automatically to be flat. We've got that built in, but we've done it in a different way. First of all, 
we've, we use it on a phone and the microphone is the microphone that's in your phone or tablet. We don't need a special calibrated microphone and it's not on a cable. It is that microphone in that phone. Now, the obvious question is, well, how can it be? If it's not calibrated, how can you just measure the response at the listening location and adjust that to be flat? So we do a, a neat little trick. Uh, when I, as a designer, am designing a, any speaker, you hopefully start by designing in what's called an anechoic chamber, a reflection-free environment. And um, that's the kind of gold standard. There are techniques these days that obviate the need for a physical chamber, mostly. Um, but even so, big chambers can't measure down accurately at subwoofer frequencies. So we rely on a technique called near field measurement. We take our calibrated measuring microphone, my lab standard microphone, and I put it as close to the speaker as I can. In that location, it's measuring only what the speaker is outputting, not what the room is contributing. So it's the pure version of what that subwoofer is doing. And in fact, that is the version that I designed the subwoofer to have. I'd love if you got that, my desired response, at your listening location, but we know you don't because of the room. So what we do is we sort of calibrate the microphone in the phone by holding it near the speaker and making a frequency response measurement where it's not influenced by the room. We then move the phone to the listening location, make a second response and just EQ that second response to match as perfectly as we can the first response. No need to calibrate the microphone now because we're only looking at the differences. It's a really cool technique because what it's guaranteeing is the response you get at your listening location is not some arbitrary target response that someone who was designing a home theater receiver decided would be a good idea. What you're getting is the response I designed the speaker to have so that you're not EQing it beyond its operating range. You know, suppose you've got a sub that only goes down to 30 and you're trying to EQ it down to 20. You're just wasting power because it can't mm -hmm. produce 20 hertz. This way, you're, not, you're only making it do what I said I wanted it to do. So it's a very powerful technique and it's very quick to do. You press a button, you hear a sweep tone, you, pr you move to listening location, do it again, you're done, you're set up. So uh, it's really nice process. <clears throat> it's absolutely, and I'll tell you, it absolutely works. I, uh, I love it, I love it. Um, like I said, it weighs 77 pounds. Uh, I mean, and, and that's the thing. I mean, when I when I gotten it in, I go, oh my God, look at the size of this box. And then I took out the base. Even the pucks are amazing pucks. You can just feel the quality of this product. And then when I plugged it in, you know, not everybody, not all of my customers have receivers with built-in microphones and all of that yeah. technology. We have a tendency to deal here with the, what we call the knuckle-dragging Neanderthal ampli uh, audiophiles. And so this really allows them to get some of that technology into a two-channel system with a tube amp. And, uh, and uh, I have to applaud you. Parts and engineering. Parts and engineering, that's always what I'm talking about. I want to thank Andrew Jones for coming in. Is there anything else you want to cover on this, Andrew? I think we got most of it, or did I forget anything? I think we did get most of it, yes. I think so. Yeah. As always, man, you are absolutely rocking. I love <laughs> the stuff that you do. I love the way, most important, I love the way that it sounds. So, listen, contact our non-commissioned salespeople, go to our website, uh, make a, you know, you can come pick stuff up here at our beautiful 20, 26,000 square foot location. Look, at Upscale, we don't just want to slog stuff out of here. We want to talk to you about what you're trying to have happen, and we want to really treat your system like it's our system. I want to thank my customers, and I especially, I want to thank Andrew Jones. Thank you. My pleasure. I enjoyed it. Thanks.